Hello there, guys, and welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week, I am joined by the creator of the Odd Entity podcast and the Podmoth Media Podcasting Network, as well as Corvus Review, Janine Mercer. Now, anyone who's been listening to Genuine Chit Chat for a little while will recognise Janine's name because she was actually on episode 78 of the podcast. So I really recommend you guys go back and check that out. It's not essential for listening to this episode because this is completely a separate episode entirely. But if you like what's spoken about in here, you're almost definitely going to like what was spoken about in the previous one. And it's always good to check old episodes because it makes me happy, makes the guests happy. So everyone wins. Plus, you guys get some great conversations. So make sure you go check out episode 78 of the podcast before or after you've listened to this one it is totally your choice so just a couple of quick bullet points of the things we discuss um, we start off with talking about how weird covid and lockdown and things were i mean this podcast was actually recorded sort of july time and obviously now it's september so it's a bit of a sort of delay almost in in releasing but janine wasn't fussed when it got released and i had some other people who wanted their podcasts out a bit quicker so that's one of the small reasons for the delays um but yeah we speak about covid lockdown just for a little bit at the start and then we speak about janine's hearing issues as well which is quite interesting as well and the general weirdness of 2020 uh, we talk about our Funko Pop collections and just sort of collectibles in general and things and how fun and enjoyable it is just to collect stuff. Uh, and then we get into the sort of uh, the weirdness and the things that, um, if anyone's familiar with Janine, the things she's much more familiar with, which is what the Odd Entity podcast is much more about. Uh, we speak about cryptids, vampires, werewolves, aliens, uh, legends and things. And we kind of finish off this part of the conversation with how Janine's intrigue into the weird and wonderful came about. Now this is a nice long chat, so I have split it in two. Obviously this is part one of the chat. Uh, part two will be released next week at the usual time as well, uh, and I'll get into that a bit later. So that's more or less it from me at the time being, guys. There's no promo on the show. I think in a couple of episodes time I've got a couple more promos lined up. Um, but at present there's no promos or anything, so just go check out Janine's numerous websites I've included in the show notes and uh, discover her podcast, Podmoth Media, and all kinds of other things as well. Uh, make her happy, make us happy. And um, yeah, that, that's more or less it from me at the time being. If you're not familiar with the show, the chat will start shortly after the sort of intro music plays and things, and then I'll be back at the end of the chat just to talk about what's coming up in part part two, general things that are coming up for Genuine Chit Chat in the future, speak about my other podcast styles, comics and canon, and a few other sort of housekeeping bits and pieces there. So, you know, make sure you listen all the way to the end, but I'll let the chat get on. So thank you so much for listening, guys, as always. You know, follow on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Subscribe, tell people you like the show, do all those usual things. Thank you so much for listening, guys, and I'll talk to you at the end. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. That's a great thing about me. I'm always on. <laughs> Doesn't matter where and when. You just That's tell my me. problem. That, that's switch. my exact problem. It's like there's Here no off switch. <laughs> <laughs> people wish there was an off switch for me a lot of the time in fact people have actively told me that oh. they wish they had an off switch i know it's terrible that's but... terrible <laughs> i am here with janine mercer hello there I, I like doing the intro thing quick fast <laughs> get it out of the way even though i ramble on the intro far too much but it's great to have you on again janine and we've already been chatting a bit before uh, mike and we both podcast is quite a lot so the intro bit is always like Okay, stop all organic conversation, yeah, right. press the button, <laughs> say your name, say okay, now I can get back into it, but are you doing all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. Um, you know, the the we talked about this a little bit before, but the COVID-19 thing kind of is a little crazy. Um, I'm in the US, I'm in Wisconsin, so um, they're talking about instituting um, some sort of a, a, I guess, a law or like a strict guideline about people having to wear masks even when they're outside and they're within 30 feet of people. Mm, wow, okay. Uh, so I, it, it'll be interesting to see if uh, a lot of the conservatives will actually grab onto that and follow the rules. Um, I myself have been very liberal for a lot of my life. My family is very liberal. Canadians in general, I think, are very liberal. Not, mm. I don't want to speak for all Canadians, but it seems that way. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that because, I mean, a as of right now, I, I could go across the street to the... There's actually a butcher kitty mm. corner <laughs> from me. So if I leave my house and walk across the street... 
there there is a tiny little butcher shop where like all of the clientele is old and none of them uh, are wearing masks. And it's close quarters. There's no possible way to social distance. They've covered all of the checkouts with plexiglass. <laughs> but I mean, it's not you you can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna slap some duct tape on this and it's gonna be great. You know, we're all gonna be fine. It's not gonna happen. You know, you you have to take it seriously. Mm, yeah, it, it it's it's over here. People over here, the government guidelines aren't as strict on individuals. There's the only mask. Uh, certain companies can say if you have to come into this area with a mask and things like that. But apart from all that, right. it's just public transport. It's just on buses, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to wear a mask. I think all taxi drivers and things have to wear a mask. And I think you're strongly recommended to wear a mask when in a taxi. But they've all got the some plexiglass between the front and the back oh, now. Right. So yeah, and all, all the shops and things, uh, especially the supermarkets they've yeah because they've got a surplus of like stickers and things they've got loads of arrows and things they've got actual on the tiles how much distancing there is and i think there was somewhere i can't remember if it's in england or if it's in america i think it might have been england there was um social distancing hearts like uh, spray painted on the grass in like certain parks oh. so they're like all two meters apart and it's like yeah. this big grid of hearts and you can sit yep. in there with a few people oh. uh, so that's quite cool yeah 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 um but beyond the covid19 thing i have been one of the i don't even know how many millions of americans who have uh had to go on unemployment insurance Mm. um because my the business that i work for is going into bankruptcy um and they don't know what they're doing to come back after this or if they'll come back after this so it's it's just kind of been a little bit of drama um Mm. beyond that uh oh i got new hearing aids Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if That's... I ever told you this before, but I'm hard of hearing. I think you might have in yeah. briefly. I don't recall the hearing aid, but please do, please tell. So, I mean, I know that your listeners are not going to be able to see them, um, but <laughs> they're, they're ear go hearing aids. Oh, that's really cool. So they're very small, <laughs> mm. um, and they literally fit, like, right into your ear canal, so wow. you can't see them. There's nothing oh, to physically amazing. see. That's incredible. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you been hard of hearing? Oh, oh gosh. Um, well, when I when I was a stupid teenager, um, I was in a band, and I spent a lot of nights standing in front of amplifiers with no ear protection. Um, so I would say that my hearing probably was damaged then, uh, but I never actually admitted to myself that I was hard of hearing until probably two years ago oh okay um and it's it's one of those things like a lot of people who deal with different stages of hearing loss say that it's difficult the most the most difficult thing is to admit to yourself that you have an issue Hmm. um so basically i just kind of had to sit down and give myself a pep talk and be like listen (laughs) you know like you need to do something about this because I could be in the living room and my wife could be in the kitchen and I can't hear what she's saying to me. Uh, um, or I mishear everything. And then like two days later, she'll be like, did you go to the butcher and get the rolls that I wanted you to get? And I'm like, no, like, what, when did you say that? You know, I have no idea. Uh, um, I see. Which makes it very frustrating. Um, it can make you very angry because you feel... <sighs> You feel like you're almost like on the outside of everything. Hmm. You're not really part of the conversation. You're not really like a whole person because you can't get the whole picture. You know, you're not getting the whole story. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so it was about two years ago that I finally was like, okay, um, I need to do something about this. Um, And then it was a year and a half after that (laughs) that I finally did something about it because I'm a terrible procrastinator with a lot of things. (laughs) Um. But yeah, I found this. Uh, I found this company called Ergo, um, E A R G O, um, and the hearing aids are rechargeable. Uh, they come in like a little, um, a little domed charger. Oh wow, that's really cool. Um, so you just, you know, they're USB, so you just plug them in, and uh, yeah, they uh, they fit completely into your ear canal, so nobody knows you're wearing hearing aids unless you tell them. Mm. Um, and I think it's it's a really great thing to be able to be part of the conversation again. Mm. Um, But I also think it's really great that there's something that you can do for yourself that also removes that sense of alienation because you're wearing, you're, you're disabled. 
Mm. You know, like I have a hard time thinking of myself as disabled in any way because who am I to say I'm disabled? Like there's so many other people in the world who are so much worse off than me. Mm, that's um, what yeah, like I, I don't know. I mean, that was just kind of the way I was raised. Like you don't complain about that because there's so many other people in the world who are suffering right now. Who are you to, you know, complain because this happened to you when there's so many other people, you know. Yeah, when you think of disabled, you often think of like more detrimental effects. Usually, the first thing you think right. of disabled, you think of wheelchair. You think yep. of someone who is obviously disability is much more than what you can physically see. But the mm-hmm. first thing people, the knee jerk reaction in a sense is you're not in a wheelchair, you don't have crutches immediately. And it's just, I can understand right. how even something as subtle as a hearing aid, which some people would notice, but some people obviously would notice and then will treat you differently due to just seeing something in your ear. Right. Whereas this is nice, subtle when it's, you don't even have to worry about having that interaction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, a lot of um, businesses say that they don't discriminate against people that have disabilities but that just means that, you know, like, it's illegal to do that, but that just means that they're not going to say it out loud, mm, you know, exactly. and they're going to hire based on the way that they want, and they're going to fire based on the way that they want, and it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, you know, for example, I'm a lesbian. There are a lot of places in Wisconsin that say, oh, yeah, we hire LGBT, you know, QIA plus people. Um, we're very pro, but at the same time, they don't have anybody from that community on their staff because they haven't hired them or they fired them for other reasons. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. It's it's another hoop that you have to jump through. There are so many hoops hmm. in life that you have to jump through. Um, yeah, and in America, it's quite a lot of water. A lot of the waters are a lot muddier as well because obviously yeah. it, I know it's different states have different sort of – there's the federal law as well. as mm-hmm. It's just – there's so many layers to it, whereas in England, at least, from my perspective, it's, it's yeah. easier. But obviously, but you can't – systematic oppression in in the sense of mm-hmm. hiring someone as i've right. said uh before to friends of mine and things it's like e- even if you legislate against racism for example when you say like anyone who fires someone for being black or doesn't hire anyone for being black you if if the interviewer or the person who's going to hire them is racist but doesn't say anything about it right they can just say oh they weren't a fit for the company and that can be true obviously because the your skin color and your race doesn't determine how good you are going to be an employee for a place of work right but people the, the law, unfortunately, in that regard, is like that. One of those little caveats, like you can't really ever know, unfortunately, and right. that is that's one of those things about that's one of the things where I'm in a privileged position in that sense of I am male, I am straight, I am white, I am British. It's all these things right. that have just make things a little bit easier in the sense that I don't have to worry about I didn't get the job because of this thing about myself necessarily. It's it, I understand in that regard from an outsider perspective because obviously I haven't that privilege (laughs) that I have unfortunately well yeah and you know I mean there's so many invisible lines yes that's a very good way of putting it you you don't know if you've crossed them until you've actually crossed them and then you're like oh shit (laughs) you know like oh that's why that happened because I you know I happened to mention to somebody that I was gay and now all of a sudden I'm fired and it's because of work performance but I've never had a performance review and like what you know, it doesn't make mm. any sense. That's um, behind the curtain. I mean, there's a lot of people struggling with that. There, there's just, I mean, there's there's so much, you know, racism and ageism and sexism. And, you know, I mean, th- there are so many isms <laughs> that we just that. can't, I mean, you know, you, you almost can't juggle them all. And now, you know, we have, you know, all this stuff going on with the, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, you know, all those other people who have been, um, you know, murdered, um, mm-hmm. I, I will say murdered um, by the police. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's coming from somebody who is from a military police family. Um, I think that that behavior is completely unacceptable and um, wildly unfortunate. Um, for people who are supposed to be out there protecting people. Mm. But yeah, I mean, we, we're we just living in a crazy world right now. I just... 2020 is mental. I just don't get it. Like, can we please rewind? <laughs> like, do I get a do-over? <laughs> it's like, if you said this time last year, because everyone was like, 2020, it's going to be everyone's year. You know, 2019 was a God. bit crap because a few celebrities died and this happened, right. this happened. It's like, and then 2020 comes around and we're like, it's going to be the best year. And then, you know, there's the uh, bushfires and things. It's like, okay, right. God. And then there's this whole, uh, I think it was... Iran or Iraq and I'm very insensitive for not knowing which one but the general 
who was connected with terrorism and things, that whole mess that happened. And everyone's like, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. Oh, and then right. COVID happens. And then the protests. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> everything is happening all in this one insane year. And we're only just over halfway. Yeah. But yeah. that is, it, it's, it's absolutely insane. But speaking of something crazy, what you've done is your amount of pop vinyls that you bought and the reason that you've got (laughs) and the reason i bring it up is because since i think it was when we last spoke and i I, you showed me some of them obviously we're friends on social media and things i see some of the pictures and things and i i've got there's a site over here called zavi and it's just like collectibles and t-shirts special edition uh dvds that sort of jazz nerd merchandise it's great and they they have pop vinyls all over the place and it's just the the resistance because i've been bought a couple for christmas and i've got little collections of them and things and megan was like oh i've never had one it'd be cool if i got one so i've got her like a freddie merc Mercury one uh, and a Wicket one from Star Wars and uh, has a, oh, I've got another Star Wars one. There's a there's another one coming. She doesn't know about. There's like oh, we've God. now got I think f- fifteen. But I've always been like a collector of stuff. I, I collected yeah. uh, special edition video games for a while and then vinyls for a while. Special edition DV- uh, Blu-ray DVDs called Steel Books that are in metal cases. And now it's pop vinyls. So I'm going to get loads of them. <laughs> Too many for the flat. And then we're going to get a house. And then I'll have loads more space for all my pop vinyls. But yours, <laughs> you've got next level. Yeah, um, I think that uh, the last time I checked, I was at almost 600. That's incredible. Uh, which is not a lot compared to some other people that I know. That you know? Wow. Yeah. Um, there's a, a group on um, Facebook called uh, Wisconsin... I think it's Wisconsin Funko Pop Vinyl Collectors or something. Hmm. Um, and there was a guy on there who had just hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Funko merchandise. Not just wow. Funko Pop vinyls, um, but like the soda vinyls, the ones that come in the little soda, the little soda can, hmm. um, the little minis, the mystery minis, just like, I mean, just insanity. And he had like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so every time we would go, um, I think it was like once a week, they'd ask people to post their top 10. Which is essentially a list that you have that shows your top 10 highest priced pops. Um, and my highest priced pop is like $1,200. I paid $9 for it. Amazing. Um, but it's highly collectible now because they only made like, I think they only made like 500 pieces. Oh, wow. So that's the other side of it too. Like I have a lot of collectibles that don't necessarily have a lot of value. Um, they have personal value. Like to me, I enjoy them. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's largely just like this one is worth twelve dollars and this one is worth you know seventy two dollars and this one you know so there's only a couple um the the captain america black and white funko pop that i have is um from gemini collectibles that one is twelve hundred um and then i also have one uh when the the first thor movie came out they did a whole line of pops and uh so i have the the thor from that movie specific re- movie release that is mm. like three hundred and twenty dollars or something oh, and then wow. they they go from there like i have a four pack of universal monsters um i think it's like 350 now valued at mm-hmm. 350 but i mean the other the other part of it too you have to consider if i ever wanted to sell anything i would have to look at the sold listings on say ebay Mm-hmm. And be like, okay, well, this one is worth three hundred and fifty, but it's sold for two hundred and fifty. So, you know, what do you, how do you price it out, kind of thing? I, I don't know that I would ever sell anything. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. My I've wife got, wishes um... I would sell things, <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah I, I can't. My girlfriend is very similar. Um, I've got. I've got a lot of different collectibles and things like that. Like, um, there's a game called Fallout New Vegas, and they released mm. a special edition where you get um, uh, the poker chips, a playing cards, an art book, and a few other things. And there, it was only, there's like 9,500 or so made, and it's oh, got sure. the stamp on how, you know, number 3,000 or whatever. Yep. Uh, and it's, it's all, <laughs> I managed to, I got a copy of, uh, I got that Fallout New Vegas, and then I laser burned it, uh, or whether my Xbox laser burned it. And then, so I went to, it was game station at the time um and basically got another one back but they didn't take the, the broken one off me so oh. i went home and i then i realized that i had still the broken game with the receipt and the fixed one so i just took it in again 
and I had two sealed brand new copies and I just put one back in my collectible edition oh, thing. Right, yeah. So it's completely wrapped and it looks like it hasn't been touched. Nice. And it's like one of my only collectibles where I'm like, even if that got worth, if it was worth like a million pounds, if there's some sort of crazy billionaire out there who wanted one and he was like, I will give you, I, I would do that. But yeah. like, if it was like, oh, you could sell it for like two grand. Right. That's the kind of amount where it's like, that is, a, I wouldn't want to lose two grand. Yeah. But that that's quite pushed through guys quite a lot but if it's like 500 i'm like ah but 500 like, i kind of w- would the amount 500 would bring me bring me the joy of the sentimental value of that because like, my dad got right. it for me who uh, passed away and yep. i've got a lot of things that are like that and it's like would i really want to sell it i've got like, old game boy advance games that i've got like linked to the past and metroid and things that like, remakes that are worth oh, about yeah. 80 quid at the moment and the yep. bought for like, 30 and so i don't want to sell them because i think the games are amazing but if they sold for like five grand you know what i mean but they're never right. gonna the, the, the chance because then i'd be like oh if they sold for five grand i'd sell them then it'd be like well those movie moments the next morning they'd be worth five million and that's always right. in my mind so I just never sell in case i lose out on the sale yeah almost. well you know and i think a lot of my collecting is i think it's from it has something to do with my childhood because when i was growing up we didn't have a whole lot of money so mm. whenever i got something that was you know, action figure. I was never into dolls. I was never a Mm. doll person. Um, So for my birthday and stuff, I would always ask for action figures. And those action figures were always like Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, He-Man. You know, I mean, you you name it, Ewoks. Like, (laughs) I just had (laughs) anything and everything related to these shows. And I wanted to take all of that stuff out of the package and play with it. And now that I'm an adult, because we didn't have a whole lot of money, and now I have a job, and, you know, I'm a functioning member of society, (laughs) now I want to take all of this money and just throw it at (laughs) plastic pieces of shit. You know, I don't don't know if it makes any sense to anybody but me, but it's just like, now I want to keep everything pristine in the plastic. Um, Like, for example, Mego... um, just released a line of Universal Monsters characters. Oh. And they they have uh, a line from, like, the... I think it's the 60s, the late 50s, early 60s. Um, and I won't even get into, like, T1 Megos and, like, the difference <laughs> between the... Because I'll lose you. But... <laughs> um, but they, you know, they were they were dolls and they came with clothes and they were for, the, you know, quote-unquote little boys to, to play with. And so they re-released the entire line. So now they have, like, the Invisible Man. They have the Creature from the Black Lagoon. They have the Wolfman, Dracula, um, Phantom of the Opera. Like, you know, there's just there, there's a, a whole line that they've re-released. And so I had to buy one of each and then <laughs> keep them pristine in the packaging so that, you know, 50 years from now, maybe, somebody will open our sarcophagus and be like... Look, she was buried with all of this plastic shit. How much is it worth? <laughs> and then that'll pay for you know the them the hosting the me upkeep. in the cemetery. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great that's a great plan. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, with the pop vinyls uh, and things, I've been or well, Funko Pops, I've been with them at the moment. Uh, Megas has got one from the the Witcher as well. I got the glow, mm. it's got a glow in the dark uh, flame spell, which is cool. And I. I really like the way they are at the moment. We're in a flat. And we're, this is just, we're living here for a couple of years. We're just saving up to buy a place. And oh, sure. we're renting here. And um, because we're renting, our landlord's pretty lenient with certain stuff. We could put nails in the wall and things. But I don't really want to put full shelves up. And I don't want to you know, redecorate because that is more right. hassle that's worth. And then you put all the effort in and then you move out in two years. And then it's just like, um, <laughs> so I'm going to wait until we get a house. But I want to have like a shelf up. And it's like, there's this internal struggle with myself. And it's like, one of my pop vinyls is a hand solo exclusive that my mate got me. Um, and it's, it's just got an exclusive sticker on that's nice. And only the Geralt Igni, uh, which one has also got one of those on it and they're special exclusives or whatever. Right. And it's like, I want to get them out and make a little diorama with them because I've got like Star Wars characters and I'm going to get some Harry Potter ones and probably a couple of Lord of the Rings and Dragon Ball Z and loads of things because I can't stop. And <laughs> I have to limit myself to like one or two a month, but I've got like six or seven that are pre ordered for August. Oh. <laughs> because I've just out the year I've been oh, I'll buy those three then two for 18 quid or whatever or three for uh, three for 30 quid or something like that yeah. but only one of them's out and the other two are pre-orders and they've all because of COVID they've all just got right. stuck and they're all coming out in August so I'm going to get like seven or eight of them in the post God. but I'm like 
do I do I want to take them out? Like I can if I take about the packaging and leave the packaging and preserve it, I could put them back in, but then that won't be mint. And what if they become loads of money one day? But surely I should have fun with like I'm 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 well, almost dreading getting a house because I could just put it off until then. <laughs> right. Well, and I mean part of it. So okay, so about a year ago, I came to the realization that um, I was collecting for myself. And so I'm not going to super worry about what everything is worth because I'm not Mm -hmm. collecting because I want to collect things that will eventually be worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm collecting right now because it brings me joy, you know, like whatever makes your heart sing, right? (laughs) Yeah. Like, so what I've done is um, I have painstakingly opened some of the packages that I have in order to display the items that I really like so that I can enjoy them. Because, Mm. I mean, ultimately, it's it's in my office. Like, I'm the only person who goes in there because there's creepy shit in there. My wife doesn't (laughs) like it. Um, So, I, you know, like, half the room is collectibles and the other half is creepy shit. So I just, I, you know, cut off a piece of the room and I was like, okay, now this part of the room right here, this box, is going to be for all my collectibles. So I I went out and I bought... um, Ikea has these Detolf cabinets, which are like glass-sided tower cabinets. Yeah. Um, They're like, I think they're about like five feet tall or something. And I took three of those and put them together. And now I have like different, you know, setups. I have different risers and stuff like that that you can buy so that you can see everything. Hmm. Um, And there are some items that I will not take out of the package. Okay. Because, I mean, the Captain America that I have is worth 1200 bucks. Like, I'm not... I, you know, I, I can see that through the window on the box. Like I don't Mm. need to open that box. (laughs) Um, but just a little tip, if you ever want to open a box and have it remain mint, then what you do is you get a spatula that's about the same size as the slot on the, on the bottom of the box. Mm -hmm. You stick the spatula in and you stick your finger in a little bit and you pull out on the bottom flap. Okay. Take the figure out from the bottom close the box back up that's genius thank you so much for that yeah you're welcome <laughs> that's amazing i mean yeah it's collectibles are weird things when i think about collectibles i think of crows uh which are a cool incredible being mm. and they obviously they collect things like shiny things and there's been stories of people when they make friends of crows yep. and their crows break like they feed the crows and the, the crows bring them around a piece of jewelry they found or little shiny things and i just think it's almost, it sounds so almost lame to say out loud, but almost the weird little part or the tiny amount of DNA that I share with a crow, that's what that is. Just this, I just love, <laughs> not shiny things necessarily. I, I generally, with Funko Pops, I don't like the metallic, the, the like purely chrome metallic ones as much. Mm. I like the, I like ones where you can see the in air quotes detail and the colours. And it's like, I've always been into collectibles since I was younger. I've always just, yeah. even just little cheapy things, you know, you go around the corner shop and there's little Mario things mm-hmm. and you get, yeah, and you always get the, the one you don't want. But it's, they're fun and I just collecting them and just even now ordering them on, you know, Zavi or whatever. And you just, you know, it's coming and it's like, oh, the knock at the door, the delivery's come and you open right. it up. And it's just, it, it's what you say, the joy. It's a very, it's, it, it's almost, it, it's just an explainable. If someone said, what do you love so much about it? It's like, well, I like getting it and I like mm-hmm. opening it and I like putting it on the side and then looking at it all the time because it right. makes me happy. <laughs> and it's like, that's why, like, I just like, it makes, I don't know, when I'm not looking at it, I'm less sad than when I'm looking at it. Right. That's, why, that's why I've got so many. <laughs> well, and I mean, I, I also, I, you know, I was a communication major in, uh, in college for my bachelor's degree and uh, I did a presentation once on um, artifacts Okay, yeah. And placement, because it communicates a lot about us and and who we are and how we function. And so when you look at my office, my desk faces away from all of the collectibles. Mm. Except for the ones that I'm keen on, which are like Uh. on the back of my desk or like slightly off to the left. Yeah, apparently it's really easy to tell whether or not your coworkers like their family, judging on where they put their pictures in their cube. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want to deal with your mother-in-law? No? Oh, you probably put her behind your head then so that you don't have to look <laughs> at her all day. You know? Oh, man. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. One of the things uh, to change gears slightly, or I'll end up talking about uh, collectibles the entire time, um, was one thing I really was excited about when we were talking sort of before the, the show and uh, messaging and things, which was uh, cryptids, which when you said that to me, I had to ah. look up 
the the word yes. and then when i saw it i was like oh i know what that is so if you want to explain to people what that is because it's like that people listening are probably be like i don't know what that is when you explain it they'll know <laughs> well um i mean i i don't really want to get into like the definition of the word cryptid and like oh that what, becomes too you know whatever you know. Um, but I mean, my favorite cryptids are, uh, the Mothman, the Jersey Devil, um, let's see, uh, werewolves, anything related to werewolves, because werewolves are actually pretty big in Wisconsin. Mm. Um, people have been seeing werewolves in Wisconsin for a very long time. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a big one for me. Um, also Spring Hill Jack, which was a 19th century boogeyman. Um, mm. he was in England. Okay. I'm so closer to you than he is to me. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I mean they're they're essentially creatures that defy explanation. Mm. Um and if you've read a story about them, logic would tell you that it's not necessarily something that you should believe wholeheartedly. It's something mm-hmm. that you should take with a grain of salt and then do your own research. Yeah. Um, when I said Mothman, a lot of people probably flash to that movie, The Mothman Prophecies. Um, if you ever watch that movie, it talks about Point Pleasant and the Silver Bridge collapse. And um, I think that was like around 1966, maybe. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the bridge collapsed and apparently for a few days before people were seeing this for lack of a better word, bird, giant Mm. bird-like creature that had, like, glowing red eyes. And uh, they said that every time something bad happened, they saw this creature. And so they started to attach it to death and destruction and, you know, whatever. And then in terms of the Jersey Devil, um, we have some similarities there. The Mothman, you know, the giant bird, the glowing red eyes. The Jersey Devil was a similar kind of thing. Um, It apparently lives in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. It was the 13th child of Mrs. Leeds, who some say was a witch, and um, had sex with the devil, and then had this offspring who is a mix between a kangaroo, a goat, and a bird. (laughs) <laughs> okay, the goat, I can kind of get um, with things to do with the devil, but... <laughs> yeah, also... well, apparently it also has a forked tail. So, you know, de- it just uh, screams devil, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, apparently that, you know, because it was the 13th child and it was born on a very stormy night and whatever, um, it came into the world apparently very violently and attacked some family members and flew up the chimney and went to live in the Pine Barrens. Um, and that story apparently is from, like, the 1730s. Oh, wow. So that story has been around for a very long time, and people are still seeing it, just like people mm-hmm. are still seeing the Mothman. They're still seeing, you know, Sasquatch, the Yeti. <laughs> you know, they're mm. they're still seeing all of these strange creatures. And logic would tell you that it's just not, it's not realistic to think that these things exist. Mm. But in the back of your mind, you're like, but what if? You know, yeah. that's just, I, I mean, that's the reason why I enjoy um cryptids and cryptozoology and Hmm. um i find it fascinating i i don't i don't really understand these shows that get out like in the woods and try to find bigfoot (laughs) and stuff like i don't i don't really get that like he's on to you dudes he's not gonna come out um plus they're too freaking loud like the cameras everywhere like he's not i mean yeah bigfoot got better things to do well, it's like if, if he did exist, it's like the actual, if he was uh, a being that existed, it's one of those things where it's like, I, there's a lot of paranormal things, which I don't necessarily, I'm not like, I necessarily believe, but right. there is that part of my back of my mind where I'm like, part of me does kind of think it is. So it's like sure. al- almost, I feel like almost a lot of people uh, with re- religion in some ways are almost like, no, 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 there's no God or anything. But if is there a heaven though? It, it's almost in that kind of way, in this sort of, you can't fully shake it in some ways. Uh, you know, not, I'm not a religious individual to clarify, but it is just that, as you say, is I, I, you kind of want it to be, you know, you want that, that mystery. It's almost what I like about things like Star yeah. Wars. And this is like, that's what I love about media, right? reading fictional stories and getting into, uh, you know, the thing I love about Star Wars, it's escapism in some ways, but the, you know, being able to move things with your mind and having crazy laser swords, being yep. a space wizard, like that's amazing to f- imagine. And it, oh, in, right. Encrypted is like in a 
in a more grounded way. It's like, what if there's cool... Well, yeah, what if there were werewolves? What if vampires are a very fun one? Like, the oh, amount right. of history to do... Obviously, mm-hmm. I think it's like Vlad the Impaler. And then, I think, was Nosferatu a, a person or a legend? I know there's the film, which was um, super old. Yeah, Nosferatu... So, I, I don't remember... I did a piece about this for um, the podcast way, way, way back. Hmm. Um, but the movie Nosferatu is actually a ripoff of Dracula... So, okay. like, the woman who owns the rights for Dracula got pissy with the people who made Nosferatu and demanded right. they destroy every copy. Oh, okay. Um, and some copies slipped through. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Nosferatu is essentially a, a loose retelling of the Dracula legend, from what yeah. I understand. Hmm. Um, but Dracula is actually... Vampires in general are very interesting because... Vampires are not, um, they're not cryptids, um, they're legends. Right. Um, and the legend, uh, is very, very old. Um, it's associated with, uh, death, but it's associated with the understanding of death, which way back when was very limited. Mm -hmm. Um, people didn't understand the process of putrefaction. They didn't understand how bodies break down after burial. Um, they didn't understand how gases built up within the corpse. You know, they, they just didn't understand all of the science behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because they thought that their family members were coming alive at night and going around and sucking people's blood, they would then, you know, go to the graveside and drive a stake through their heart. Um, mm-hmm. okay. Or they would put a, a stone in their mouth. So you have some bodies being found with actual, like, rocks jammed into their mouths. Wow. Um, and, I mean, it, it looks very violent, but people did that because they just didn't understand why if you opened a grave, you know, it's it's the dead of winter and you've opened this grave and you're looking at your deceased loved one and they have blood at the corners of their mouth and they look like they could be alive. Hmm. And, you know, your uncle is really sick and he's saying that so-and-so is visiting him at night hmm. and whatever. So there was just all this lore surrounding it and uh yeah i mean it it's built on fear it's just all built on fear and um you know for lack of a better word ignorance Mm. um of exactly what happens to bodies after they're buried and I think there's that religious tone to it as well, because obviously there's the whole, for a long time, yes. and in a lot of vampire things, it is The Cross. And it, it's, yeah. you know, one of my favourite uh, films is From Dusk Till Dawn. It's ridiculous over the top. Oh, God. Uh, George Clooney film? was such a baby face in that movie. Yeah. It was it was so good. I loved it. It was one of my first tastes of just of ridiculous over the top yeah. uh, grindhouse that sort yeah. of thing. And it's you know he's got the shotgun with a bat, and it's like oh he's God. got he shoots with the shotgun, and then he lifts it up, and it's a crucifix, and all the vampires like go, Boom. and it's so cheesy, and I love it. Love and he it. dips it in holy water, all that stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's like the the crossing. I remember watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That was when I was like ten. I was I watched all of them yeah. with um, my childminder that's just basically a babysitter, but straight after school and uh what did you say your your child minder child minder yeah it's basically it's a babysitter is when the parents often go out at night you have someone there who's a babysitter to oh, make sure okay. the kids go to bed a child minder is more so after school if your parents are working you go there and then your parents pick them up it's almost like the opposite in some ways oh so it's a daycare uh, Kind of, yeah, but it's huh. the child mind is not like it is daycare. The ter- it is correctly daycare, but here it's like a daycare is an official business, which has several people there. Right. And there's loads of kids there, whereas a child minder could have one to four or five. And it was just my child minder. She had two daughters. One was my age, and one was five years older. And for some reason, especially when I was younger, I had an affinity with getting on with older women a lot more. Not in any oh, weird right. way. It was just I just <laughs> I was very talkative and I was very interested in a lot of stuff. And so when this uh, girl Gemma she was yeah five years older than me she liked watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and she wanted to watch it mm-hmm. I caught it at one point and then uh, my mum found out and said yeah that's fine and I was like, awesome so I was watching like, Buffy <laughs> the Vampire Slayer like, when I was at 10, 11, 12 it was amazing I think Willow was my first crush actually <laughs> from oh, that show really? yeah Alison Hannigan, Hannigan great mm-hmm. yeah I mean I don't like her as much in American Pie um as, yeah. But then obviously Buffy she goes she's a witch and she goes that season where she goes absolutely mental and it's like yeah right uh, it, I love that sort of thing and so vampires for, especially with my generation you know it's it, since they've been around for a very long time mm-hmm. but there was the, the the peak obviously I'm not into Twilight I've seen almost all of them with my oh, niece God. but I know they offend me with the shiny light and it's like the one thing about vampires is sunlight come on but I love Blade <laughs> and all that stuff so vampires are like 
I know they're not cryptids, but they're, they're one of my favourite legends. They're like that thing where it's like, it would be so cool if they existed, but it really wouldn't be. But it would be. Right. <laughs> well, and the really interesting thing about werewolves, too, is they kind of toe the line between legend and cryptid. I think those two are the most common things put together. I mean, yeah. zombies kind of in the older vampire stuff, but yeah. werewolves and vampires always, uh, when you have a double, if it's vampires by itself, whatever, but as soon as it's one other supernatural thing, it's almost always werewolves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then also, before we move on from Mr. Dracula mm. uh, and vampires, you know how some of those graves that you see, the really old ones, have, like, cages over oh, them? Oh, yes. So... A lot of people seem to think that that's to prevent the vampire from rising. Right. Um, it's actually like a, a, a safe For that's grave placed robbing. on the grave to prevent grave robbing. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I actually, I, I recently did a, um, a piece about Burke and Hare. Oh, I've, um, I've heard of them because there's that movie the out I haven't seen. <laughs> it's about... Yeah. Yeah. And it, it talks a lot about how they would go into graveyards and they would, you know, rob human remains and they would sell the remains to medical schools and, and what have you. And I mean, some people paid just ridiculous amounts of money to protect their loved ones remains to keep them from getting stolen. <laughs> um, and other people just couldn't afford that. So they just basically sat around the graveyard every night. Oh, wow. Um, until the body decomposed enough and then it wasn't usable. Mm. So, so yeah, anyway, those cages. Yeah. Grave robbing. Not That's amazing. Vampires. But to do with werewolves and things, like, do you know why they're intertwined with vampires so much? And the sort of, I'm interested if, if I assume you know the sort of, is it lichen? Is to do with a uh, lycanthropy, that sort of thing with werewolves? What is it? Is that what's called? Like, li- is it lichen? What's the oh, thing? Oh, lichens. Um, is that anything to do with werewolves? You know, yeah. I, you know, I kind of feel like a lot of the vampire werewolf lore was intertwined through pop culture. Mm, that's how I um, know about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I I think that that's because I mean from from what I've done, and I am by no means um, an expert. I've just done a lot of research on on different topics. But um, from what I understand, those two legends are not connected. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people watched uh, what was that movie with um, Kate Beckinsale and Scott oh, Scott Underworld. Speedman. Underworld. Underworld, yeah. I think that when that movie came out, people started getting really super into werewolves and vampires and, like, it was uh. cool and, you know, whatever. Um, there's also, uh, I'm sure, uni- like, the Universal movie line. Hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure they have one that's, like, Dracula versus the werewolf or, like, Frankenstein versus the werewolf. I mean, they were constantly trying to put people together so that they could sell more seats. Hmm. You know, and it's like, you know, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, you know, or like the Three <laughs> Stooges battle a werewolf. Like it was it was literally like just to put asses in seats. They were like, yeah, you know, we're going to put all these people together. But um, but yeah, I think primarily it was just pop culture. And, mm. you know, what what two things can we put together that are going to be really interesting? Well, if we do a movie about Van Helsing, you know, oh, well. You know, we'll throw vampires and werewolves in there, and that'll be really cool. Um, you <laughs> That's know, what I whatever. Of that, I um, yeah, I just uh, I recently finished watching uh, what we do in the shadows. Uh, is that the series or the movie? The series. I haven't seen the series yet. So the series is awesome. Oh, okay. I need to watch it then. Um, it's hilarious. The um, the guy who plays Mister Renum on the IT crowd. Oh. Um, is it the boss you speak of? Yes. Is that Matt Berry? Yes, or the Matt other Berry. Boss? It is Matt yes, Berry. Cool. So, so he's in it. Um, oh, I love him. And he's, I mean, he's just hilarious. And like all the stupid, like sexual innuendos and like whatever. <laughs> it's essentially like Mr. Renum as a vampire. That is the best. Um, but yeah, it was, it was literally like watching an episode of The Office, but with vampires. <laughs> it was <laughs> fantastic. You know, all the, the live, you know, the quote unquote live, like interview tactic kind of TV. I love those sort of shows. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I just finished watching that and I am just completely smitten with it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie yet. I have to watch the movie uh, next. But So I've, I've already seen the movie because I, I like the director uh, Taka Watiti because he did Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's done what we do in the shadows. He did a film called Boy that I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok, Hunt mm-hmm. for the Wilder People. That I, I love that. And Jojo Rabbit. Oh. 
Yeah, I seem mm. to recall something about Thor. People were worried that he was going to direct Thor, and they were concerned that it was going to be, like, weird or strange or something. I don't know. I yeah. feel like I read an article about that recently. But they, I think they were worried, and then he did it, and it's one of the most popular of and all the... <laughs> it's, it's literally one of... It's probably my favorite of the, all the Marvel films, bar probably right. Endgame. But he's also going to be doing a Star Wars film as well uh, with oh, someone God. else. So it's like... Let him just at the moment. I'm like, just let him do what he wants. Do loads of weird, crazy things, and if they right. suck, we won't talk about them. Just but throw money just, at him. Yeah, let the crazy guy <laughs> just be. He's so awkward. He's like someone yeah. I know described him as like um, he's so such dramatic things happen, but everyone reacts in such undramatic ways. Yeah, it's brilliant, and it's just like this constant like casualness to everything, and it, it's, yeah. I love it. It's the New Zealand it's like flight of the Concords. Have you seen? Flight of the Concords. Oh, I think I the, like a oh my god, like a half dozen years ago. But yeah, yeah, it's it's quite old. But that sort of they're New Zealand, and obviously they're more musical. But it's that sort right. of humor. I just uh, I do love that. But yeah, vampires are such a. Oh, no, I was going to ask werewolves. Actually, you said about oh, there's a lot of werewolf uh, sightings in a sense around Wisconsin, around where you are. Did you say? Um. Yeah. So uh, the Holy Hill area. Um, Holy Hill is like, they have a really nice church there and there's some really nice grounds and stuff. Um, but apparently it is like a breeding ground for werewolves or something. Like people right. have experienced werewolves running alongside their car. Um, late at night, they've experienced strange howling noises, uh, that they can't explain. Mm. Um, it doesn't sound like a normal wolf. It sounds like something larger. Uh, Let's see. There's the uh, the Beast of Bray Road, which is another werewolf legend. There's there's literally a road um, in Wisconsin called Bray Road, and uh, apparently the the Bray Road Beast is like a werewolf human hybrid something or other mm. um, that supposedly has torn people apart and <laughs> you know whatever. I mean, there's just there there's so much I don't know hearsay. I mm. guess. In those kinds of stories. Um, a lot of them, I think, were designed as cautionary tales. Uh, I think mm. we kind of talked about urban legends last time. and Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and how they're designed essentially to, to be cautionary tales. You know, don't go down there late at night because something bad will happen. Don't go here because something bad will happen. Um, and the something bad will happen is literally insert anything <laughs> <laughs> that your mom or dad or grandparents can conjure up on a whim um and and insert into this threat you know don't go here or something bad will happen so yeah I, I think that a lot of the stories were designed in some ways to do that um there are also adults who are reporting that they're seeing it uh so i don't really know i mean there's a documentary on amazon right now um i think called the beast of bray road okay um so if you have amazon prime it's you know free to to view, I don't know how much it is if you don't have Amazon Prime, but probably a couple of bucks, you know. Normally, yeah. Uh... Um, but it's it's a really good movie. Um, towards the end, they talk to a lady who has written an extensive book about the Beast of Bray Road and compiled all of the experiences um, that she's she's gotten from you know people who live in that particular area in the Holy Hill area. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's it's a pretty interesting legend. Um, and mm. some of those recordings that people are sharing, they're pretty spooky. Like, it doesn't sound like a wolf. <laughs> it sounds like somebody, like, howling or screaming like a wolf. But it's, you know, dead of night and there's a slight fog and it's kind of delightful. <laughs> some of those weird, crazy things. I remember when I was younger, um, I think it was around... Right at the end of school, so I was 15 or so, and I remember going to the library and taking out loads of uh, books about the paranormal and ghosts and aliens. They were the two things that grabbed me uh, hugely. And I think that's because my brother, I've got a couple of older brothers, but um, one of them uh, called Rob, he's been on the podcast actually, he um, he and I used to watch loads of films. He got me into Terminator and Aliens and Predator, and he'd always say, Mum would say, he when I was... 12 plus mum said you can watch anything as long as there's no hard drugs or sex in it so that was <laughs> predator and aliens <laughs> and terminator and as much blood and gore and right. ridiculousness as possible as long as my brother said it was okay i remember once they said i couldn't watch i think it was my crazy ex-girlfriend i think it was oh. which is like an uber thurman movie that i still haven't seen to this day funnily enough okay. but because there were certain amount of sex references in and i was i think it was like 
I don't know, 11 or something. And it was out on DVD or whatever. And they said, I couldn't watch that, but I could watch Predator 2. I was like, <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, I think there's a scene where someone gets skinned in that, but that's cool. You're right. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say. So I, I, I got into Aliens, um, and I think it was around the time where YouTube first was a, kind of being a thing. I remember going on computers and things, and I just for hours would look up Alien and Ghost Things. Oh, sure. And, you know, I mean, whether or not any of them would actually could be real is another story but some of them were so convincing like mm. it, you i look i watched i remember watching one of them now, now like a year or two ago i looked one of them up and i remember it being quite freaking and you watch it now and you're like god no this is <laughs> so how could i even conceive right. this is real this is like, clearly really fake yeah yeah like there's a, a big noise or something and someone runs to the, the room and then you hear a, a loud bang and he turns and you see an alien face that turns and runs and but it's right. literally like have you seen Alien Autopsy, the film? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw that when it premiered on TV. Yeah, with Adam and Deck in yeah. it. And they're the two guys. You always make me sound just like so old whenever it's <laughs> back. It's like, you do, well, you know, we went to the drive-in and it was such a, well, I mean, I went to the drive-in, like the first movie I ever seen, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's the alien autopsy, like the thing they've got in, in basically that film on the table, it was yep. basically one of those things. Out yep. their YouTube camera, it was really low res with a n- night vision stuff, and it ran. And I remember being so freaked out when I was younger, and then I watched that now, and I'm like, damn it. But they, you can only go down a rabbit hole, and you you so want to watch one where it's like infallible. But now, because of computer technology and everything, it yeah. the chance of an actual alien sighting being caught and put on YouTube... And not being some ridiculous amount of world news is right. very unlikely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's where my sort of love for it. I read books and stuff like ghosts and things like that. I, I'm not sure if I asked you last time we spoke. Is there? I know that you've mentioned about uh, potential paranormal experiences and things, but have you? Uh, is your family? Do they believe in in that sort of thing? Is that where it started, or what was the kind oh, of? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's the opposite, isn't it? Uh yeah. Um, my dad is very much. Um, He's very straight-laced when it comes to what's going on in the world. Things are a certain mm. way, and there's no gray mm-hmm. area. I see. Um, my grandparents are the same way. Uh, I was I was raised um, essentially to look at everything through a lens of this is probably not real, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then kind of go from there. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I like I remember going to the creepy kid in high school and getting a loan of the VHS tapes of Faces of Death. What was Faces of Death? Can I recall? And like I've it was it. it was like these creepy videotapes that showed like autopsies and, and stuff uh, and like like severe accidents or whatever. And uh, it was like this big thing. And I remember like me and a bunch of my friends went down into the basement and we were watching it as low as we possibly could, like all <laughs> lying on the floor right in front of the TV watching faces of death and i remember i wasn't like super disturbed by it but a lot of people were and i was like why like why are you super disturbed by this this is not like some of it some of it you could absolutely look at it and be like yeah that's that's fake like that's not like that's clearly ketchup and jello and whatever (laughs) and like they went to the butcher and they got innards or sausages or something and that's what this is but then there's that other side of it that you're like, but that kind of looks a little real, maybe. I'm not really sure. Um, and that's kind of the way that my brain has always operated. Like, I've always been, well, that kind of, I mean, that's a little weird. Like, what is that? And then I have to go in and, like, dig and try to figure out. But, yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, my uh, my upbringing was... Uh, a little strict. I think I told you the last time that uh, my parents got divorced when I was like 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, I went to live with my grandparents for some time. And my grandmother was of the opinion that little girls, ladies, young ladies, um, are not out past like 8 p.m. at night. <laughs> and they don't do certain things and they don't wear certain things and they act a certain way. And so she was Roman Catholic And my grandfather was Salvation Army. Uh, My father was Salvation Army. Uh, A lot of people think that Salvation Army is just a thrift store. It's not. It's an actual religion. (laughs) Um, And it's very strict. Like, God punishes. And, like, God's going to get you. Like, (laughs) like bad. It's bad. Um, But, yeah, so, I mean, I, I was 
raised that way. And um, I was never allowed to do or say a lot of the things that, you know, I, I do and say now, which is why I'm so <laughs> kind of out there and crazy shit. Interesting. But yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I got to a point in my life, I think when I was like in my teens, like my late teens, I decided that I was just going to do what I wanted to do to like figure out what was happening in the world around me. Um, because so many people in my life had told me, well, that's not real. Well, that's not true. And it's like, but who are you? What do you know? <laughs> you know, like, so I, I've always been kind of a cynic. Um, but also that person who has that little like Jiminy Cricket voice in the back of their head, like, but what if, you know? Mm. And I, I think that's, that's largely the way that I operate is on the what if. Um, yeah. I mean, in terms of aliens, I don't really have a firm stance on aliens. Um, I'm not really sure I believe or disbelieve. I do mm. know that the universe is very, very big and yes. there could very well be something somewhere. I think there's more galaxies in the um, universe than there are grains of sand on Earth I mean, or something. Yeah, or like, mental. It's, it's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the paranormal, I mean, I've personally had paranormal experiences. I've had them since I was very young. So, I mm. mean, when I, when I talk about that stuff, I can... I can personally say with an absolute certainty that those things happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, but then somebody else has that voice in the back of their head that's like, but wait, like, <laughs> you know, what are, is what you're telling me true? Or, you know, is it something that you made up or whatever? Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we all have a little bit of cynic in us. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those with, I've said it with ghosts before, there's a lot of people whose opinions I trust uh completely you know and things you know everyone's got not in quotes, the weird friend but you've got people who believe in things that are very different to you and quite out there and i'm normally the friend who loves chatting with these people especially I've, i go to festivals and things and get intoxicated and i love sitting around a campfire late at night and chatting with someone mm. um and we just we're, like a lot of the time it's ridiculousness about the universe but it's so fun to talk about like right. for example i'm not mocking if anyone believes this but for example the aliens back thousands of years ago you know 200,000 years ago ever came down either mated with us or helped us technology or some sort of thing and then that made is one of the reasons why the human brain size doubled in size in such a short period of time i i don't believe that happened if you if you said to you i think that is what happened in human history i would say i don't but I love talking to people who believe that because it's it's such a fun thing to talk about. And I go, there's no there's no harm if someone if someone's believing that and they're putting detriment to their family and they're thinking aliens are going to come back and they start ruining their lives and things like literal tin full hats. I'd say okay, you know, take it down a notch. <laughs> but if you're just someone who likes to get a bit mullered and likes to chat about what right. if aliens? Oh, that would explain this, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, but it would explain that too. And it's fun. And I feel like that with the paranormal. And I feel like that with even to some degree religion in a different mm. way depending on who it is because obviously religion can be quite a uh, powerful and also unfortunately toxic in certain ways sure. in obviously uh but i'm not saying people who are religious are bad in any way shape or form but it's that sort of thing where even though i don't believe in any religion and i don't necessarily believe that ghosts do i'm not like ghosts do not exist and i'm 100 percent. it is that i don't think they exist but yeah. i love hearing paranormal experiences i love going into places that people are haunted and you do feel something like sure. one of my favorite things is castles and in britain i'm, I'm so thankful oh, for yeah. living in britain because we've got such history and so many people invaded us over the years that we've got so many different things that are so cool and i love going into old castles and me and my girlfriend we were planning on going this um my girlfriend megan she has a name uh, we <laughs> we go on this trip uh it was going to be around europe and things in august uh but we'll postpone that to next year now so right. we're just going to go around England and we're going to castles and museums and just loads of cool. I think we're going to go to like a cider, uh, cider orchard at some point oh, as well, sure. yeah. which I love cider. But I just love castles and museums. And when you walk somewhere, you just feel how fucking old it is. It's mm -hmm. so cool. And that That's one of the things that I love about ghosts is that you always get them in some of the coolest yeah. places. And there's always a great story to go and why this is haunted. The woman in the white dress who saved all these army soldiers, but then saved someone, saved a bad soldier and then, or not bad, the enemy soldier, but then the good soldiers on our side killed her for betraying. And there's all this right. cool history. And if it doesn't matter if there's a ghost, because the yeah. story and the environment is cool enough. And that's what I really like about your show and also talking with you. Cause it's just, 
it, it doesn't matter. I don't like when people are like, you can't talk about aliens because they don't exist. It's like, well, yeah. my opinion my opinion on aliens, and I'll, I'll ask a question to you because I'm just rambling, <laughs> is just that aliens, I believe they exist in the universe somewhere, as in a life that maybe one could argue is sentient in some ways like us, or maybe dogs and cats, that sort of thing. You know, that level of being. I believe there's got to be a planet that has some degree of life on it but do i think they've necessarily come here and visited us and we've got evidence of them statistically Mm. i think it's unlikely but it's fun to talk about i mean i think that if they have they wouldn't be telling us no they would be so (laughs) they wouldn't be leaving calling cards (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) we were here sorry we missed you like no (laughs) there wouldn't be any shit like that it would just be like yeah, okay, so we went there on this, you know, such and such a did star date, da 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 and they were doing this, and we found it really fascinating, and so we're going to log it, and then, you know, in 25 years' time, we're going to go back again, hmm. you know? But yeah, I, I always find the um, the concept of, like, alternate realities really fascinating. Yes. Um, and I I almost feel like we're living alongside different realities, so, like... We're here right now, but to the right of me and behind me, perhaps there's something else going on in in a different world, in a different time, in a different place. Mm. Um, And it's kind of the way that I look at death as well. And it's, I mean, it's a little hokey because I have kind of sort of started thinking this ever since I saw the movie Mirrors with Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, I think I remember you saying about this before. Please tell me again. I I love this. Say it again. It's amazing. Okay, so it's a movie about this guy who gets a job as a security guard at, I think it's a store, some sort of like old um, retail space. And there's there's something about the the mirrors. So there's like some sort of, it's been a while since I've seen it, but um, there's some sort of, I don't know if it's alien or like paranormal, something, something going on behind all of these mirrors. And so there's this room in the basement that he goes into and he can see this completely other world. And at the end, there's like a really weird, like, I don't want to give it away, but there's like a twist ending um, where he's looking into the mirror and the mirror is looking back at him. And like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's very strange, but it's something that I think I can get behind just because I'm not particularly religious. Um, because I feel like religion equals creepy, too creepy for me even. (laughs) Um, I actually, it's really funny. I had a conversation with my grandmother. My grandmother was like, you know, I don't understand why you enjoy all this creepy stuff. Like, it really worries me that, like, you collect bones and, like, like weird stuff. And I said, Nan, you're Roman Catholic. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> We're going to have this conversation? You're in a glass house right now. <laughs> like, no. I mean, they collect, like, saints' bones and, like, you go to the Vatican and they have, like, the past popes and like little you know and they're like green like weird little green men and those red they look like the Grinch yeah like they're you know and in these cases and you can go and look at them I'm like that's the weirdest shit ever and you're gonna tell me that because I have a raccoon skull in my collection that's too creepy for you I just yeah I don't know it's funny the, the crucifix as well. I was going to say there's so many churches because I went to a Catholic primary school. Oh, Neither right. of my parents are religious, mm-hmm. uh, but I went to a Catholic primary school, and so when we went to mass and church and things. Uh, you, there's a big Jesus crucified with the <laughs> the things in his hand, you yeah. know, the the the, the bolts and things in his mm-hmm. hands and his feet with the thorn crown bleeding. Yeah. And when we're mm-hmm. having these nice songs about God is love and all that sort of stuff, which yep. is fine, whatever. And you're looking at this crucified <laughs> guy up there, and it's like. That that's pretty damn weird. Like that that yeah. bones are cool. And Tuxedo-y stuff is really cool too. But it's like yeah. that is a bit a bit of a push for you and me. <laughs> yeah. Um. At the college that I I got my bachelor's degree from, um, it's a Franciscan institution. Um. So like Saint Francis of Assisi, the poor man okay. from Assisi. Um. And in like when you go down one of their main hallways. Um, at the top of a bank of stairs, like staring you right in the face is the San Damiano cross. And I don't know if you're familiar with the San Damiano cross, but smaller versions are okay. They're okay. It's okay. When you blow it up to like 17 feet tall, his abs 
look like an erect penis. <laughs> so it's literally like a man being crucified and really enjoying it in the middle of this Catholic university. And I'm like, can we go somewhere else and study for this math final? Because I can't stand Jesus's erection right now. I just can't do it today. It's too much. And that's the end of part one. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. Part two will be out next week at the usual time, but I'll give you a couple of quick bullet points for what's going to be discussed there. So I kind of stopped it there before we got too much into the discussion of what I deem as hung Jesus, which is it continues on for quite a while. So I thought I'd save a little bit of that for next week. So that kind of continues on. We speak about sort of religiosity mixed with legends and monsters and how the perception of religion in horror has changed over the years. Um, Janine's eclectic collection of artifacts, humans love storytelling, and then towards the end of the chat it gets into slightly more political territory and we speak about protesting being on the wrong side of history white guilt and that sort of thing so the end of part two is more political which was unusual but it's fun uh and that's kind of what you can expect so if you're not really into politics still make sure you check out part two because the majority of it is and the weird and wonderful world of the macabre that you come to expect from janine mercer so make sure you check out that I also really hope you guys like the name of this episode. It's probably one of the only times I've even referenced my own name of the episode. But calling it Vampires, Aliens, Pops, Oh My. Uh, if you don't get that reference, then it, I'm quite upset by that. But I thought it was quite a funny little reference. So I just want to <laughs> let you guys know about how proud I was of writing that as well. Also, as I said in the intro, you know, make sure you check out Janine's other appearance on Genuine Chit Chat, which was on episode 78. That was a nice long talk as well that was split into two parts, so, you know, check that out too. And also check out Janine's podcast called The Odd Entity Podcast. I'll include a link to that in the description, as well as her quarterly publication called Corvus Review, which we spoke about in episode 78 of Genuine Chit Chat as well, and her recently founded new podcast network called Podmoth Media, which a link to that is also in the description. So other news and things. I think I said it last week, but I'll remind you guys again. Um, I have appeared on Comics in Motion once again, not just my Star Wars Comics in Canon show that airs every Saturday, but I've actually appeared on one of their new shows, which is called Comics on Trial. It's essentially where three people are involved, one judge, one defendant, and one prosecutor, and you basically put it's like the court of public opinion in some ways. Um, so the first episode that was out was with Tony Farina, who's been on the show before and hosts Indie Comics Spotlight and Comics in Motion. Um, he went on there as well as Chris and Dave of Comics in Motion, and they basically discussed Hulk, the 2003 film, and Tony was defending it chris was attacking it and or prosecuting against it and dave was the judge it's an absolutely brilliant listen i mean i cannot stand that film i think it's one of the worst films ever made but listening to them we'll talk about it was it was a lot of fun uh the one that i did which was out on the 20th of september if you want to check on the feed of comics in motion and go find it um i was against scott weatherly um of 20th century geek um he was prosecuting against me and i was defending uh and it was the phantom menace um, which was a very it was a lot of fun debating with uh, with Scott and uh, the judge Paul from Superheroes for Dummies and Superheroes for Dummies is also found on the feed of Comics in Motion uh, it was just it was so much fun to have that so I'm really glad and proud that I was in that it was great fun uh, and there's going to be lots more coming that way so if you haven't already subscribed to Comics in Motion be sure you do because obviously Comics on Trial comes out which is amazing there's their TV and review podcast that comes out and then every day of the week they also have a different podcast to releasing their own show as I said Star Wars Comics and Canon is my show that comes out on Saturdays and I talk about Star Wars comics and connections and things uh, one of the recent episodes I did was about Count Dooku because there's so much history to Count Dooku people don't really know um, like his apprentice before Qui-Gon why he left the order all sorts of other things as well so that's really really interesting to me <laughs> and to the people who, you, who do listen it's interesting to you too but if you want a bit more information about Star Wars that's all canon and things that connects with the films and the TV series and etc make sure you check out that and then there's also loads of other great shows like Mandatory Marvel and DC Superheroes for Dummies What's the Topic Indie Comics Spotlight like there's, there's a lot so you know it, it is a lot of fun being on that sort of network feed I don't know what we'd call it but Comics in Motion make sure you check that out and just in case, I have also included a Spotify link in the description to Comics on Trial, so it's even easier in that regard. Coming up over the next few weeks, so obviously next week is going to be part two of my chat with Janine Mercer to be released. Then I have got three podcasts recorded. I've got part one and two of a chat recorded with Scott Weatherly of the 20th Century Geek, as I just mentioned. Uh, so 
his chat and I, we were meant to talk about HP Lovecraft, but we got completely sidetracked right at the start and then didn't talk about HP Lovecraft at all. We spoke about sci fis and comic crossovers and sequels and all kinds of crazy things and special effects and whatnot. So that's a really fun, nerdy chat, but I'm probably going to save that for just a little bit later. I've got a chat with Goff that I've done recently, which is Goff has been on Genuine Chit Chat three times in the past. He is a blind Australian filmmaker. He primarily makes comedy movies, but he kind of made his name by making a documentary about himself called I Will Not Go Quietly. Uh, you can find that for free on Beer Nuts Productions. Uh, go check it out. It's a really touching documentary, and he made it all himself, and he's blind, so that's an incredible feat in itself. Um, he's a really, really fun guy to talk to. It sounds quite dreary, but it, it genuinely, he's, he's so much fun, and he's so light hard and we have a great laugh and that chat is just like a, a one-off it's not a two-parter and then i've got a two-parter ready to go with jared speed uh, who is an incredible individual um he owns a float lab so if anyone listens to much joe rogan you'll know float tanks and things like that me and megan did our first experience in a float lab uh, about this time last year because our friends bought it for us and then i post on instagram got into contact with jared speed who's the founder of it and we went from there so if you want to hear about float labs and stuff that's incredible and it, the chat was just amazing. It's a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to have Gerald on again. Uh, I went to his house and there's, little, there's a little French bulldog and a little pug there as well. So you can hear them snoring at certain parts too, which is amazing. Uh, so that's really what you can expect from Genuine Chit Chat coming up over the next few weeks and things. I haven't got anything re- like due for recording as of yet. I'm trying to kind of take a little bit of a break uh, but in that break i think i've had another six people approach me to come on the show or six people approach me with someone else they're intending to have on the show as well so i'm gonna figure all those things out and etc for that so that is really it guys i'm not going to go on about star wars comics and canon because i normally do at the end of this but i did mention it briefly earlier if you really like star wars uh, and you can't be asked to read the comics or if you are reading the comics and you want to know more information about them check out star wars comics and canon it is a lot of fun so then guys that is it from me as i always say you know i really really appreciate any of you guys listening especially right up here to the end make sure you follow on the usual social media places review on apple podcasts and anywhere else you listen to this and the best way to get this show out into other people's ears is by word of mouth i don't spend any money on advertising i just have guests collaborations promo swaps that sort of thing i try to do a bit more sort of organic things uh, because i've done a bit of advertising before and it doesn't really seem to do that much paid advertising that is but who knows we will see what the future holds but please share this to people you like and if this is one of your first time listening hello welcome thank you and go check out the back catalog because i have a different guest on every episode and you know there's so many different guests i've had on with so many different subjects it's just i'm sure you'll find something that you find interesting and if you're really that stuck you can go on youtube where barely anyone listens to the podcast on youtube but i've organized all the things into playlists some to do with science some to do with religion some to do with traveling some just with other podcasters so if you're looking for more podcasters to get your teeth into go on youtube go on uh, find genuine chit chat go on the playlist which is fellow podcasters chats and then you go in there you can listen to any chats with any podcasters and then in the description as well i'll have included links to their their podcasts or their websites too so loads of easy ways to kind of get connections to other podcasters and creative individuals too so check that out or you can just contact me at genuine chit chat on any of the social media places or email me at genuine chit chat at outlook.com and just say hey i like this episode can you recommend me some more and I will happily oblige. Anyway, that is enough for me, or I'm going to be rambling on forever. Thanks again for listening, guys. Really, really appreciate you, and I'll talk to you next week.